Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dan Messier Questions, episode 430, 430. Each week, yeah, we meet here to review the uh, questions and answers uh, given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of uh, wasaweb.net. He's also a Google uh, product expert on the AdSense uh, community. He's based in Wimbledon, London. David Razam is um, a fair way, well, not that far away from um, there in West Sussex, down on the, on the sunny coast of uh, the UK. Um, David is a leading internet marketer. He's based, um, sorry, no, you can find him, that's right, uh, at davidrazam.com. That's it. Tim Kappa is um, based in uh, Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim uh, is a, a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. We've got nine questions tonight. Uh, let's um, have a look at the first one. Um, Robert L. Mango has asked a question that's titled, uh, Keywords are not being distributed well across important HTML tags. Um, Robert goes on to say, it's a, it's a newbie question. I'm running SEO analysis of two websites I work on, and I'm getting this for both. Uh, any suggestions how to improve my tags? Um, and, and the time, the, the yeah, phrase he's complaining about is, your main keywords are not being distributed well across important HTML tags. He said, I have my uh, keyword in my title and meta description, not so sure what else they mean. I'm not sure either. He said, I mean, I do have H2s out there, but these are used to separate thoughts and uh, subtitles basically, which wouldn't have the keyword in there. Uh, thanks uh, in advance. Um. My my feeling about this is that uh, about 50% of the advice you get from a typical SEO tool is best left um, untouched. And I think this is uh, probably one of those as well. Um, you're, I, I'm going to find myself um, um, repeating what I think stoppage Truslow says here, which I, I've just noticed. Uh, I haven't read the whole thing, but um, you know your main keywords um, are, or the key phrase is the one that describes what your page is about. Um, it naturally goes into your H1 tag if you're using H1 tags for for headlines, but they're they're there. You know that's that should go there because otherwise you're uh, main keyword is unlikely to work for you if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't match what you're you're writing about. Um, you know, put it um, put it in your title. Uh, put it in your meta description. Although um, it won't have a a particular uh, leverage in in the meta description. Um, I'm not sure I would want to put the the main key phrase um, anywhere else or to start to start to be a bit stuffed with the key phrases. Um, find some related key phrases and put them in your H2s. Um, but a lot of these things um, just happen naturally if you're writing, if you're writing well. Um, I My feeling is that, um, you know, if your main keywords are right for your article or your article is right for keywords, um, then you can quite happily forget this uh, this error message, this advice coming uh, from your from your, your SEO tool. Thank you, David. Any more to add to this one, guys? Um, 
We'll move on. I have to thank people like Stockbridge, Truslow, Brenda Malone, um, and um, of course, uh, Michael. Um, yeah, they make yeah, they make the questions uh, so valuable, answering questions as soon as almost as soon as they appear. All right, um, let's go to our next. Um, Humphreys um, removing clients' older location photos from Google My Business. Um, if Google Maps is presenting business location images that are not in the Google My Business Manager, then where might these photos be located? I need to remove some of the client's older location photos that seem to show up for Google. Um. If they're not in the uh, account, um, uh, yeah, well, then they, they wouldn't be actually being displayed. Um, to, but what you can do is obviously uh, click through from the images from where they are being displayed, where you are finding them, which you haven't quite said. Um, I'm guessing you're saying maybe in the actual, like if you looked at the profile in maps. Um, uh, firstly, click on the image. You should see who, who actually has uploaded it. Uh, and then you can actually report it. Um, you know, you click on the three dots next to the name who's uploaded it, uh, and you can report it. But you may be able to find where it was uploaded. Um, one thing is, if it doesn't say by the business, then you know it was a third party. Um, uh, that's like a third party, or it could be the business's name. But if, unless it says by the owner, then you know it's internal. If it just says the business's name, go and look on the actual business's maps account, and then you can remove them that way. But otherwise, if they're not from a, uh, an account you control, then just report them in the, the little three dot thing. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, move on to number three on our run list. We're charging through these. Uh, Juan Dallasay Jr. asked a question, Todd, comparing the search engine optimization value of two domains. Uh, he goes on to, start to ask, uh, is there a website where I can compare the SEO value of two domains? I have a, a few domains that are expiring soon, and I want to know which are worth keeping. Well, it all depends. Like most of these sites have created their own sort of internal metrics. Um, Moz, AHF, SEMrush, which, you know, it's like which tool do you think is going to provide you with the most human created thing? None of them are based on an actual search engine. Um, it's what humans have thinks, think that a search engine is. So, yeah, there's quite a few out there. Uh, just depends on which one you think. Thank you, Tim. I'm wondering whether these are just domains that uh, Juan has, uh, has, has bought. I yeah, I think they... Yeah, I think they're sitting there without websites. No, I think I'm getting the gist they've probably purchased some domains, old expired domains. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're old... Yeah. That may or may not have any, anything on them previously. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it, yeah, we need more background information, don't we? Um, you know, Richard would be the person to ask this question. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it is why have you bought them and why do you want to keep them? I think I would start with those two questions. 
um, you know, are you holding those domains as a kind of investment or hoping that they will rise in value or whether you're trying to do something with them, you know, create a website. Um, or whether this is a, um, an old style exact match domain idea that uh, there might be more um, more value in a uh, in, in one that matches a a popular key phrase. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the problem is that the the title of the question and the body um, sort of don't really match up. So the the title says you know comparing this year value of two domains. So I, I initially thought that meant oh, okay. Um, they have two domains and they're trying to choose which one to use. But no, um, the body of question states that you know, they have a few domains that are expiring soon mm. and um, deciding to, and the question is whether to, oh, the question is how to decide which ones to keep. So that, you know, that's a totally different question, isn't it? So, yeah, as you say, it's, um, which one is going to be useful to my business in the coming 12 months? Um, certainly keep those ones. Um, or is it which ones are going to be some kind of investment? Um, and probably other questions too. Yeah. I don't know. No, I think, I mean, and then, of course, the value of a domain name doesn't necessarily correlate with the SEO value in budget comes, right? certain domain names would fetch a good price but mm. it's in fact it seo values because it's an it has an impact or it, it is exactly the domain that someone wants and so, and so forth so it's um yeah um are any of them um a product a brand um something like that a brand probably the uh, the proper owner of the brand will come knocking at your door and demanding it back um but um yeah there's lots and lots of uh of possibilities here um yeah I, i'm not sure we can say any more without getting some more background maybe one can uh, let us uh, have a bit more info and we can have another go at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's call that um, an answer for uh, number three and head on to number four. Saki Bashadman uh, asks a question titled Yay or Nay to the link building strategy below? He said, I get links for my product and homepage primarily and then target uh, any ranking articles. So, um, what's he... <coughs> so he's saying is his link building strategy for his homepage and products fine well <clears throat> well yeah there's nothing wrong with that um the only thing that i would say that's wrong with that is the link building part <laughs> because we don't know how you're doing it do you know what i mean <laughs> but yeah look fine um yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with it um typically typically like so i work with um quite a few businesses like e-com ones so product wise and i don't like look at like all the products are basically what are their best sellers what do they need to push um especially during COVID, there was a lot of things there um and i don't concentrate on all of them it's like 
what do you need to push? What do you need as a business? And it might be one particular section of it because they may either have not stock of the one, they may have too little stock, they may have stock on the way. Like that's what I would seriously be looking at is what do you want to push now? Uh, what's going to make sense? What's going to help? What's going to boost the business? Is that your phone, Tim? Yeah, I haven't heard that landline ring in like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. And also, I thank you, Michael Martin is for the uh, immense effort uh, he puts into uh, dumb SEO questions. All right, let's roll on to our next. Number five in our run list is from Joni Irene, and it's titled Merging Two Sites into One. She said, um, I have two sites for two marketing companies that are merging into one in January. I'd like to keep uh, all of our search engine optimization advantage from the, the site that will be going away uh, after the merger. My initial thought is a 301 redirect, but I'm wondering if there are potential downsides uh, to doing that. I'd just like to point out Michael Martin there said there are always potential uh, downsides and don't fall prey to paralysis by analysis. Yeah, totally. And, and also it's like, is it going to be a complete new rebrand? like always one moving into the other. So, so a totally new business brand and then moving two other sites into a brand new one. Well, yeah. Um, but you'll say 301 redirects, like if you're moving two sites into a brand new third domain, like, You know, a, a lot of this is you're going to be, you know, what is the third one doing? Like, what's the new one doing? What is it offering? Is it offering the same as the other two? You know, can you take exact pages? Those are nice, clean 301 redirects. Can you, yeah, you, you're going to have to just work it all out. You, you, you're going to be like, you know, in this instance, it's not A to B. It's not try and maintain the same structure and then redirect um if you're doing two 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 domains into one brand new domain the, it's still going to be a bit of a mishmash just like michael said that don't you just get it done you know see plan it out properly work through it and you're just gonna have to crack on you can't expect them on a brand new domain with two other ones moving through and going oh right, like it's gonna all be hunky-dory uh plan it out as best you can make the move and then crack on with it thank you tim yeah, yeah. i think that's the that's i think that's the big question isn't it is it a case of merger and you have a, a new website or it's one company acquiring another in essence um so the interesting thing is that um so they're merging into one so they they're is and assuming that it's a new site the new site will be in operation from january and that's the point where the switch will you know, the switch will be flicked on as it were um so the two previous sites would redirect to the new one i suppose the new one is now in development you know under construction so it's not publicly accessible but under development so then you would know which pages will correspond to which ones um so obviously you can't do much but um go through that carefully so that the functionally um equivalent pages exist on the new site so that come january you can just 301 redirect thank you master Turkey. Okay, let's roll on to number six. 
Stacey Colther for us, number six. It, it's uh, titled Choosing the Keywords to Target on an FAQ page. Um, Stacey goes on to ask, what approach do you take for choosing the keywords to target on an FAQ page? Um, for example, do you select a specific long tail question or do you choose more generic keywords for the page? Okay. So Stacey, the FAQ page is going to be a frequently asked question page about a particular topic, right? Or a business or whatever. That is your main thing it's the frequently asked questions of that section then so that is that for that page right then there are other things which so firstly it's quite legitimately what are the most frequently asked questions because if you think about an faq page you know an faq page is also to try and help alleviate the poor sucker that picks up the phone 15 times a day when the product, when, when, when the user's going, is that a, a clockwise nut or an anti-clockwise nut, right? So literally don't forget about what it actually is meant to be. Now, once you've actually figured out what your most important questions are, right? Those can then either be, become uh, obviously longer tail, which would be, you know, you can mark up with, uh, structured data FAQ and yes if somebody happens to search for that um, particular thing um, and you haven't got it anywhere else, else on the site then that will be surfaced uh, Google rewrites titles now and then they will resurface that particular piece and of course if a user clicks through to that from the search results you've probably seen it now that Google will actually take them to that specific section on that page, right? It will drop it down and highlight the exact thing. So I think you're looking at this completely. You, if your FAQ is about nuts, right? <laughs> okay. Your FAQ page is then going to be specifically targeted towards that. So it's going to be, does the F2640, is that a right wing nut or a left nut? Is the FXR2 an anodized nut or a yeah, anacoil nut? Okay. So you see, so if you're doing one FAQ for the entire business, then that FAQ, that keyword is going to be FAQ for that business name right you're going to answer your most frequently asked if you're doing faqs for a specific category stroke product then of course it will be frequently asked questions your questions within that will then become the keyword because that's how google searches it if somebody searches it and you haven't mentioned it elsewhere on the page if they find that to be the most relevant one it will appear in search results you've probably done it you click on it and it actually skips you halfway down the actual web page to the particular thing where you queried and it highlights it for them, right? So I think define what your most frequent questions are for that, either whether it's just one for the entire business or whether it's for uh, actual products and then actually work through what are your most frequent questions? Like, what are they? Uh, who picks up the phone? Have you like to speak to sales teams? What is their biggest pain point? What is not being explained on the actual product that should be explained? Or do you know what I mean? Like make it work for you as a business also. Mm -hmm. Very good, Tim. <clears throat> okay, let's rock on to number seven. Jason Wells. Um, he said, uh, I have a couple of keywords doing the boomerang. Have you seen that before, Tim? Doing the boomerang. No, yeah. no I don't know what a boomerang is. Apparently, it's some freaking piece of stick that 
these, these Hmong boys over there, like in some desert, like throw and like it flips around. And apparently they used to hunt with it, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm from Africa. We can't take down lions, rhinos, elephants with a freaking stick. But of course, if you live in a desert and there's only two little hoppy things that hop around and maybe a couple of birds, yeah, a stick will probably kill it. But, you know, I'm from Africa. We don't throw sticks. We throw spears. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying, well, you <laughs> what we're saying is, I don't know what a boomerang is. Ours goes <laughs> straight. <laughs> you're, you're trying to say it's it's a it's, it's something for Jim, are you? <laughs> he, he's a boomerang specialist. <laughs> he is in the boomerang world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he mentions think... also yo-yo. Yo-yo, yes. Up and down like a yo-yo. Yeah, yo -yo. yeah. Look, Jason. I mean. Sorry. Look, even if you are within, like, I don't know, let's say it's a, whether it's a product or a page or whatever, for a particular thing, stuff bounces all the time. Um, it does. You know, even if you were position one, it, it, you know, I know you say yours are much further down, like 50 to 100, 150, or whatever, stuff like that. Even position ones is up and down all the time, man. It doesn't it doesn't sit there if it's in a if it's in a niche that is constantly on on the turn it just it it will it goes up and down um totally um now with you saying yours like sort of in the like 50 odd range let's say page five that is in an area where google's constantly trying to see how things as a whole are working and moving um you're new on the scene you know they they still trying to figure everything out and those do fluctuate a heck of a lot more so when you hit page one it tends to be two or three up or downs whereas when you're further in the middle of it it, it tend to be massive big drops and things and it happens all the time yeah totally or always always happens um and also, um, not necessarily like if you've got a good site and you create, you know, that's like, oh, I say good site. That's something that's got a bit of oomph behind it. And you create a new section. Um, you'll often see when it's first found, you'll often see Google kind of go, yeah, all right, all right. And we're, we're going to whack you on like position 50 for this until we evaluate you within that whole sort of new um sec, you know uh, sort of search queries and then a couple of weeks you know a couple of weeks later then it takes a big one up to you know sort of the first page or things like that um you know maybe position 10 or then it hits the second and then just slowly creeps back in over um so yeah look it's not uncommon it's definitely not uncommon um yeah it's just yeah yeah, may I pitch in a, a kind of non-analysis of this, um, which is, yes, what Tim says in, in spades, but does it really matter whether you're at 49 or 50 or 100? Um, you're probably getting no clicks from it, wherever it is, if, if you're down that far in the SERPs. So... Um, look at improving those pages because um you know get get further up and start uh, get getting some traffic from it um as i say i doubt, doubt if you're getting much uh, whether it's 49 50 or 100. yeah or if those pages are already as much as you can spot on start building supporting content whether they be guides articles whatever would fit best for it to start interlinking and start actually leveraging it in, in that, in that sense. Excellent. Okay. Here's number seven for your 
viewing pleasure. Mr. Bryce Adams asked the question, regionalized versions of a national directory. He said, I'm happy to get your thoughts on regionalized versions of a national directory. Search engine optimization wise, um, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, for example, uh, existing well-established high-ranking nationwide directory. Deploy regionalized, localized versions, which are clones of the nationwide directory, but filtered for the specific region. Listings and articles that are for other regions are filtered out. Um, the website name and obviously URL are different. URL uh, contains region name, um, GTLD contains market, market segment name. Okay, so look, a, a lot of aggregators do this. Um, Cyclex does it. I mean, Christ, some of the main aggregators do it anyway. Uh, so the first thing is, is you're kind of actually thinking that um a business citation is actually worth anything um they're not uh business citation depending on where it is if it's one of the more authoritative ones yell well, I, hey even yell does this uh, you know on a global scale um yell yelp whatever um yeah they um you know they they, they typically don't do anything for you uh you know in five years time go back and have a look at your referrals and see how what well actually they sent to you in terms of traffic like maybe one visit in a, in five years um the point being is with a handful of aggregators out there it's just a way of getting uh search engines to understand where your business the name of your business and where it's located and in local seo that can help uh provide a little bit more of validation to the google my business algorithm when they are trying to figure out who the best plumber is in a five mile radius so in, in terms of seo value they're worth jack they're worth nothing uh, uh from a hyper local perspective um they, they can certainly help if it's a brand new business and, you know, they haven't been around much and you're just trying to get search engines uh, and Google My Business to really understand where they are, where the business is located and how they serve. If the business has been around for 15 years and they've been at the same address and that same address, you'll see oftentimes a lot of, um, a, a lot of these, um, uh, aggregators anyway have scraped them and picked them up and added them anyway um, but you, you, you'll find that if a business has been around a while their address has been out there for you know five ten years whatever they've been there for a long time if you went and if you if you took let's say the top five aggregators because they're not in them and chucked them into the top five aggregators right you won't even see a twinge like they are literally they, they they're useless but for a brand new business who doesn't have any kind of mentions out there on where they are what they do and specifically where their location is it's i'm not going to say it bounces it just helps um the gmb algo in terms of when it puts things into a specific search query for a specific area um then it helps them to understand a bit but better that here this business exists. Thank you, Tim. So in this case, um, the person asked a question runs the uh, directory, right? Um, and then, so it's a national version and then they want to create regionalized ones and I, I agree with um, Amon Johns says that you know your main directory ought to be sortable by region and it'd be interesting to know how you do that would you do that by um, parameters for example um, instead of you know creating 
separate pages for each individual location or region. I can see arguments for both, um, both approaches. But my sort of personal feeling is that it's best to avoid creating many pages um, when one suffices. So what happens if you have an overlap in regions? So you're creating, you know, let's say you have a regional one and you have a city level one. Um, you're creating a lot of work for yourself by trying to clone or you know target those specific levels of geographical location. So yeah, I think I think I would stick with a, you know, a sortable method, perhaps using parameters. But then that's my personal opinion. And I have no experience in this kind of thing. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, I think we have a question here. It's from uh, Dan Mutt. It's number nine on our run list. It's, he says, that, do you think that creating a separate product for each keyword would be better? Um, then Dan said, hey guys, I have a question please. Let's say we sell Japanese tiger hoodie. We have keywords like black Japanese tiger hoodie or zip up Japanese tiger hoodie. Do you think that creating a separate product for each keyword would be better? Um, and um, um, he said, for example, black Japanese tiger hoodie product or creating a single product okay. with multiple colors and multiple types would be better. Thanks. No, not multiple colors. So if it's a zip up Japanese hoodie, then it's the zip up Japanese hoodie and you should be able to select your color. Okay black, green, yellow, whatever, whatever, whatever. But you can, obviously, if it's not a zip up, well, I don't know what they call them, like non zip up, I think they'd call them over the head hoodies or whatever the hell they are. You could have a separate one for that because that is a distinct difference. And then the color is a differentiator. You're going to run into a whole world of crap if you start doing black ones, red ones, yellow ones, blue ones, because only one is going to show up in search results essentially and it may not be the one that is your best seller or the one that people want to buy because you're allowing google to pick it for you and it could be the hideous one they could pick the pink one and nobody wants a pink one right and you want to sell the black one and everybody lands on the pink one and the pink one shows up for zip up japanese hoodie and everybody skips it in the search results yeah you see what i mean and yes it it, it does happen so no do a single thing and then allow the user to select the color, the size, and then purchase. Um, and then do another one for, you know, like if the actual style changes, do one for that. So pullover hoodie. And I don't know if it's without a hoodie, like I don't know what you call it, like a normal jumper, I suppose, a Japanese jumper. Um, with zip or zip up Japanese, I don't know, whatever you call them. But yeah, don't go create them for 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 colors and sizes. Definitely not. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else before we wrap it up for the night? Okay. Well, look, I, I can't. I, I would. I'd be very foolish if if I. Uh, uh, closed up shop before uh, thanking uh, people like yeah, Michael Martin as uh, Christine Hansen, um, the, the people that look after questions uh, um, throughout the week um, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, and of course, you guys, uh, Masataki, David, Tim, uh, sometimes. Um, um we also see uh oh uh, richard hearn um and micah fisher kirchner um we'll be back at the same time uh, next week um 
and uh, uh, we look forward to doing this uh, all again. Um, this button won't click. What am I doing wrong? I'll try this one. <laughs>